Hey everyone, it's Amanda Marie and welcome to an interview with one of my favorite people. This is Ezra Leatherwood and we are in beautiful Long Beach, California. Uh, so stick around because we're going to have some great information about how to get in shape now. All right, see ya. <laughs> This is the man that I met in 2012 that changed my journey to health. And I'm going to ask him a few questions today about his journey and, and how he got into being such a great trainer and um, how he uh, transformed his own body and how he got into this. And um, so without further ado, here we go. So Ezra, hey, Hello. how are you? Good, my lady. How about yourself? I'm doing good. It's great to see you. It's been a while. Yes, ma'am. Um, really, I'm very interested in how you got into your physical fitness journey. When did this start for you? Yeah, so my journey into fitness started when I was a young, young kid growing up, uh, learning about girls and who you like and whatnot. So the first girl that I, you know, felt an attraction to and tried to make her my girlfriend, she actually turned me down because I was like a fat kid at the time. Oh. So she was just telling me, you know, I was too big for her and, you know, sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So from that instance, um, I just went on the journey just trying to figure out how I could change it. And, you know, the people who I felt like had nice bodies and stuff like that, I would ask them things and just learn as much as I could at the time. So you said you were how old? I was about, I was about 10 years old when I got turned down. And I started the exercise probably about age 12. Oh, wow. Yes. So very early. That's yes. really cool. Yes. And um, how did you get interested in training others? When, when did you start getting interested in, in wanting to share what you had learned with other people? Yeah, so as I got older, like I learned more. I just kept soaking up game like and learning as much as I could as I, as I aged. So I would pick up techniques and stuff like that. I would try it out on myself and I would get results. So, you know, through all the years of trying different things out, asking different people, older guys, I had a nice system developed and people would notice and they would be like, oh, what do you do for this? What do you do for that? So I would say that was probably like around age, maybe 18, 19, where people were, grown men would tell me like, when I grow up, I want to be like you. So I was like, you know nice. what? People ask me for so much advice. Let me just advise people, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. a living. Because I had a bunch of different jobs over the years mm -hmm. and I kind of was trying to find my fit. Yeah. Yeah, so that that was just one thing where it just it just made perfect sense to me. And I yeah. felt like if anybody else could do it, you know what I'm saying, based on the journey that I had, I felt like I could impart a lot of wisdom. So, you know, mm -hmm. I went to 24 Hour Fitness, I asked them what it took to become a trainer. They told me, I went, got my credentials and came back. Cool, Definitely. that's awesome. And so 24 Hour Fitness is where you kind of started getting into training. Yes. Okay. Yes, because it, it went from, like I understood the science of changing my body but I knew also I was responsible for other people's transformations so as I was um, you know studying for the certification test I was learning about all the different body types all the different ways the body reacts to stimulation periodization which is um, you know when you increase the difficulty over time to get different results so it just really it really fascinated me and by the time I became a trainer it was like perfect I, I got a chance to test out everything Wow definitely oh that's really cool um, and then as a caveat to that, what so you started 24 hour, hour fitness, what made you kind of start your entrepreneurial Oh, journey? yes. So I've just always been a dedicated person. Like when, when there's something that I'm really interested in, I go hard. Like for instance, when I started at 24 hour fitness, I was living in South Central LA at the time. Mm -hmm. And the 24 hour fitness that I got hired to was in Lakewood. Oh boy. Yeah, so it was like, I spent my whole morning traveling, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then by the time I would leave, I was on the last, but I was pretty much on the first buses and the last buses. But it, it was just always with that in mind, like it's always it's for the future, it's, it's gonna be worth it, it's all gonna pay off. So working for 24 Hour Fitness, uh, we were forced to charge a lot of money for the sessions. Mm -hmm. So it just got to a point where like, I would meet these people, I would help them and we would form bonds and I would really care about them. And then to, to do that and achieve all these things and then have to be like, oh, well, we don't have, you know, you can't afford to keep training here because the price is almost a thousand dollars. So good luck to you. I, I was just like, you know what? I would, I would find a way where I can charge less and make more because, you know, as much as they would charge at 24, we'd only get a small percentage of it. Right. So it was like an oxymoron for real in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I mean, it just, it was just a natural transition. People couldn't pay anymore, and it was like, you know what? I don't want to let you go. Can you do this? You know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it just happened from there. And then the same things that I 
at, at 24, it was like, you know, it was a structure, but at the same time, each trainer, it was up to them, like your work output and stuff like that. The amount of people you meet, new business units. So you were an entrepreneur and just working there. Like they weren't just giving you a bunch of clients. So I already had to get my own clients. So I was like, you know what? Let me just do this all myself mm -hmm. and stop charging people arm and a leg. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. And then from, from there, now, now that I've, I feel like I've mastered exercise and like helping people reach their potential, I'm limited more so by my environment and my surroundings. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able to reach more people like across the country, across the world. So now I'm starting my online training program where I can use the techniques that I've created to change my people's bodies and nice. apply it to everyone out there, anybody who wants to train. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, I know that that with a message like yours and and also your dedication to the people you work with, this is a really great way for you to expand your um, knowledge to more people and and at a an affordable way to do it Definitely. And, and something that is doable for people who maybe are a little bit more busy and can't even you know go to uh, you know maybe don't have as much time to actually go to a physical place to train but they can just have that in the privacy of their own home definitely and, that, and that's I feel like is a key component because like I said I was a fat kid so like every time I went swimming and stuff yo I had shirts on I, I, I already had lost all my weight had a six pack and I was still wearing short shirt like long shirts and big sweaters and stuff just because I was so programmed and used to it right so I know exactly how that's like and you know to be able to work out in the comfort of your home and transform yourself and then come out and look good and get yeah. your compliments and stuff like it's just it's just it's a good way to transform your body you know yeah. you don't got to worry about going to the gym and, and dealing with scrutiny or feeling like people watching you and judging you yeah. just do it at home use my expertise and just come out looking amazing awesome thank you so much i know you've got some people you're training right now in the park um got some getting some footage of that so uh let's go over for sure let's do it all right confusion I think out there and there's so many different kinds of training and I find that with anything health there's a lot of um, information overload yes. and I'm really curious about what techniques you find best for training and is it something that someone could do without I mean like you say you have um, videos coming out and stuff is this something that somebody could do without uh, a lot of equipment yes so my training style is it's all based, like like i said when i started learning about the physiology of our bodies and stuff like that like it was fascinating to me so my training is all based on boosting the metabolism and dropping your know, body fat percentage all right so we focus on building up that muscle because that's what scopes and shapes your body and as we build that muscle that um, creates a corresponding rise in your metabolism which helps us burn that fat off faster now for these things um, i found that calisthenics and and bands are the best for it because when you think about how many reps you're able to do before you burn out you get more time under tension whereas when you have the weights like you might get 10 in and now because you got that extra resistance you're burned out for an, an five minutes or so you know what i mean mm, yeah so i mean each each type of equipment has its benefits so i do have dumbbell routines available i have band routines available but for the beginners and people who just want to work out in home at home and just get started and don't want to you know have to buy a bunch of stuff i have calisthenic routines which are actually very effective and they will actually when you look at people who for instance come out of jail and stuff like that <laughs> like that's what yeah. they do a lot of calisthenics like it's yeah. very effective and it's all based on science and is that uh what you primarily use personally for your workouts yes yeah, so when you look at my body so i i pretty much i primarily use trx and i do use dumbbells all right so if you were to break it down um the number of workouts per week it'll probably be like two dumbbells and three calisthenic routines 
So you okay. know. So and that's just because for my personal goals, like I have this um, superhero short film about to come out. Okay. Yeah, great. yeah. So I gotta look the part, you know. Okay. But, yeah. But actually, like probably when I finish this film, I'm more than likely just gonna mess with the TRX because just so many benefits to it. And when you do use calisthenics and bands and TRX and stuff like that, the risk of injury is so low. Like I know a lot of people in the gym and they, you know, they're doing deadlifts, they slip a disc. Like it's so mm. many things. They people having surgeries and stuff like that. Oh my and it's gosh. just, it's just when you when you when you look at something like that where you go real heavy and then you go good for a year and then you have to have a surgery and now you're off for a year when you look at that two years you're, you're, you're you know what I mean you don't have anything to represent that time whereas yeah. if you were to just do calisthenics and bands like you can just keep transforming you don't got to worry about the injuries and stuff like that and you just when in the grand scheme it's just a lot better for you awesome right, and we've got squirrels too that's the benefit of training in the park yeah, we might get a squirrel attack on oh camera. my goodness he is really this is so cute Oh my god. Hi, baby. <laughs> I don't got food for you, bro. <laughs> so we were talking about your calisthenic routines and um, I also wanted to ask you a little bit about how you feel about cardio and strength training and kind of what ratio you see working best in your clients. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, both of them have benefits for the body like obviously the cardio is good for the cardiorespiratory system your lungs your heart stuff like that um the resistance training is just a whole nother beast though like not only does it work your cardiorespiratory system it also strengthens your muscles your bones the ligaments you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the joint health in general so it's just when you're looking for cosmetic results um one of the ways I used to pick up a lot of my clients at 24 is because I would actually go upstairs to the cardio area and I would do a body fat measurement on them. And most of the people who were up there were not happy with their body fat percentage. And the reason why their body fat doesn't really drop very fast is because when you're doing cardio, cardio basically takes your metabolism currently, uses it to burn some calories. It doesn't build more muscle, which boosts your metabolism. If anything, it takes away from the muscles and it leaves you less muscle to burn the calories with, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's why when you lose a bunch of weight through cardio and then you take a week off, it's like all the weight comes back mm -hmm. because it doesn't boost your metabolism. It doesn't make it harder to burn, I mean, easier to burn calories in the future, okay. you know? So, yeah, so a lot of people who, um, I would be there at the beach, for instance, doing my body fat measurements, and I would see the people jog by and, and all throughout the year, these people always look the same. Mm -hmm. Never had any muscle tone or anything like that. It's because not it's not much of a it's much of a challenge as the resistance training. Okay. But, but like I said, it has its place. So um, if I was to give you a ratio of the best utilization of cardio and resistance training, mm -hmm. it would be two days of cardio and three days of weight training. Okay. And by weight training, it doesn't have to be weights. It could be body weight. You know, any type of resistance. resistance. Yeah, bands, okay. you could be, you know, in the pool doing some aquatic exercises. Mm -hmm. It's all about what you want to do. But definitely you want to do some type of resistance at least three times a week. Okay. If you if you want to change your body, like the shape of it, and if you want to make the time more effective and make it easier to burn calories in the future. That's one thing about me is because I do so much cal so much calisthenics and I build so much muscle is, like if I take a day off or two, it's not devastating to me, you know what I right. mean? And then if I do gain some weight, all I need is like, one, two good days of cardio and I'm, I'm burning it back off because I keep my metabolism so hot. Right. So I think people have the wrong focus and they just want to just jog and run. But it's like, yeah, keep jogging and running, but don't forget to build that muscle up because it makes the running more effective. Makes sense. So I know that when people like you train a lot and stuff like that, you can get burned out like maybe on certain exercises or maybe you're just you know you're not feeling like you said maybe you have a few days yeah. what has through the years what has kept you inspired to keep going yeah. what what do you what do you do to to be like okay i don't feel like it but i need to get out there what what yeah. is it you look to so it, the same thing that motivates me is the same thing that i used to motivate my clients and that is the results okay like when you've spent years building something mm -hmm. to watch it just crumble mm -hmm. is 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 horrible it's like I, I just couldn't let it happen like to look myself in the mirror and just deteriorate so what happens is if i take a day off two days off i start to feel a difference and then once i start to i really don't i try i try not to get to the point where i see the difference you know right what I mean? absolutely but i am human so you know sometimes you know you might take a couple days off few days off and yeah just just losing my results right like i've just gone too hard and done too much to just let it all fall apart and then also um, you know, everything I do is with the future in mind. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my life and how I want to look when I'm 60 and 70 years old, 
like they got this thing on Instagram. It's called the hashtag Sexy Grandpa. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet, but good. I, I that's funny. Yes, okay. and one of my favorite movies is Butterfly Effect. So mm -hmm. it's like everything you do affects like the end game, the end result. Right. You know. So I just want to get as close to being that sexy grandpa, not having to go to the doctor's office. Right. Living on my own, being independent, not having to be you know a liability for my children when I have them in the future and stuff right. like that. I just always want to be healthy, strong, and be an asset, be able to take care of myself and protect myself and stuff like that. You know. So this is what I'm getting from this, which is this isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. Most this definitely. is this is something this is a long term lifestyle decision Most that definitely. you've made. Yes. And so when you're looking for inspiration, you're looking at that end game. Yes. And how you want your you're designing your lifestyle according to what you want as definitely. you go forward in your life. Definitely. Because at the end of the day people gotta realize the time is gonna pass. It's gonna pass right. regardless. Right. It's all about how you feel, how you look, what do you do with that time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all in your control, for real. Yeah, absolutely. And um, do you have any new personal fitness goals at this time that you're working toward? Personally, like I said, I got this character that I did, that I created and you know I just want to make sure he's he looks amazing as possible because I want to I want him to have action figures and <laughs> you know okay, what I mean yeah. yeah so now I'm hitting more legs than ever before because you know I got to wear these compression tights and you okay. know what I mean yeah, yeah 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 so you know just some more aesthetics okay but um yeah actually as far as exercise goes like they have a lot of different shows and stuff like that that's another way I keep myself motivated I watch stuff that I feel like helps fuel my ambitions yeah like one of my favorite shows is uh, my 600 pound life Yes, I've actually seen it. Yes. Yeah. Crazy show. Helps me look at gluttony and be like, you know what? I don't need to eat all this. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Another show that actually helps me with that same sentiment is Naked and Afraid. Oh, okay. I right? haven't seen that. Naked and Afraid. They take these people, these uh, survivalists, take them out there to some country, strip them naked, give them two survival items, and they got to figure it out from there. Wow. So to see them go from like not knowing what they're going to eat to like finding some berries, and some some heart of palm, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah. then and then they're just sustained though, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's, it's not the you know chicken, the side dishes, the seven yeah. course meals, but they're alive, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They end up losing a lot of different weight because you know they don't get the the most sources of food, the the best sources of food while they're out there because they're just scavenging for real. Right. But just seeing that you don't need it, you don't you don't need it. Just seeing examples of like how to control, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So just different stuff like that, like oh, watching that's watching stuff that helps you. In, in your ambitions yeah yeah inspirational videos exactly plus the end game and realizing that what you do day to day matters for your health and your body exactly because that's what it is it's all about the small things that you do every day that lead to those big monumental changes well this has been awesome i really appreciate all this information that you're giving me right now and i know a lot of the viewers are probably wondering how do i get in touch with this guy how do i work with this guy um and and I, I want that information but also when you're when you are looking uh for clients or when you are doing evaluations what kind of stuff do you do when you evaluate a client uh when i first meet with somebody i, I really want to assess because when you're building a business like especially with this type of business right here like consistency is important not only for financially mm -hmm. you know for your finances for your checkbook but also for the results you know because it's all about new business units you know so mm -hmm. the thing that motivates other people sometimes is seeing people's success right so if you have people that aren't consistent like that you yeah. know what i mean it's not going to give you the best before and after pictures which in tune in turn wouldn't bring you the most clientele back right you know so it's really about focusing on the right people the mm -hmm. right types of people mm -hmm. so people who are consistent people who don't make excuses so um, you it's, want it's, to it's not really a, like a physical thing like when I see somebody and like right. they can't touch their toes or they can't do a pull-up like I don't care about any of that I can take you to the point where you're hitting pull-ups and we're building the muscle I want to know where your mind is at you know right because I need you to be able to come through and not make excuses I want you to, to want this as right. bad as as bad as I want these results for you I want you to want it yourself so that's what I focus on when it comes to new clients so I want to know about your journey mm -hmm. I want to know what's your motivation why do you want to do it is it just you got a vacation coming up or do you understand that you get one heart and you need to keep it healthy and strong your whole life right you know what i mean and it's, yeah. it, that's, that's what i do i try to get people that i feel like also go along with my same beliefs and then we just take it further together we all we all achieve more yeah you know? absolutely so when you're looking for a client you do a basic assessment to see if it's a, a good fit for for both of you definitely okay that's definitely. great 
And where can people find you? Where can they find you on social media? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so if you go to, I try to have one hub where you can access all my, because I'm involved in a lot of different things. I'm getting more into film and production and cool. you know, I'm into yeah. music yeah, yeah. and all these different things. So if you go to my website, kingtutfitness.com, okay. it'll keep you plugged in with everything I'm into. That's great. Thank you so much. And thanks so much for today. Oh, anytime. And helping me along my journey. Oh, it's definitely. been it's so great having you as a, as a person in my life that I know I can count on. Uh, all these years. Oh, so, likewise, my lady. thank you so much, Ezra. <laughs> likewise. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> See you next time, everybody. Yes, ma'am. Thank you everyone for joining us today. It has been great information here. And um, as before, I will go ahead and let you know exactly how you can get in touch with Ezra. Um, go ahead and tell us your website one more time and I'll also put it in the description box and um, get you a link to that. Definitely. As we discussed in our interview, it's www.kingtuffitness.com. Thanks everyone for joining us today and I will see you next week. Whoa!